All right, so we've just come off a, a huge series of videos about solving quadratic equations. Now we're going to look at a bunch of different types of equations in these following videos, starting with rational equations. Now, whenever you see the word rational, you need to see the word that is hidden in here, and that's the word ratio. And when we talk about ratios, we're talking about fractions. So that means when you see rational equations, we're talking about equations that contain fractions. Now, the big thing that we have to take care of is getting rid of the fractions, somehow finding a way to legitimately eliminate the denominator, and then we just solve the equation that results from that. It's really not that bad. But the first type of rational equation that you come across is what's called a proportion. And a proportion is, is fairly simple. A proportion is going to be an equation that has two fractions that are equal to each other. So a over b is equal to c over d. Okay? And so if you have this setup where a fraction is equal to a fraction, then here's what we know. In a proportion, so in a proportion, cross products are equal. Now this whole idea about cross products is something that we would have talked about a long, long time ago whenever you were first talking about fractions and you were trying to figure out are these two fractions equal? Are, are they equivalent? And the way that you would do that is that you would do the cross products and you would check to see if the product here was equal to the product of those two guys. Okay, so those are, that's what we mean when we say cross products. Please don't say cross multiply. That I just don't like that. It's just kind of nasty. So in a proportion, cross products are equal. So that means that the product that I did here in pink, that's going to be a times d. This guy is equal to the other cross product of b times c. Now a and d are called the extremes. Uh, B and C are called the means. So the product of the extremes is equal to the product of the means. Um, and so by doing this, by setting the cross products equal, we go from an equation that has fractions to one that doesn't have fractions. So let's see what that looks like for us. So let's take this equation and see if we can solve it. So if I take 2x plus 5 over 3 is equal to 3x minus 8 over 2. So what we just saw at the top of this page is that we have a proportion. And with a proportion, we know that the cross products are supposed to be equal. That means the product of these guys, so I'm going to write that as 2 times 2x plus 5, that product is supposed to equal the other cross product, which would contain the two factors 3 and 3x minus 8. That's what we're saying when we say that cross products are equal. And from here, we don't have a fraction, so we just have to multiply things out and see what kind of equation we have. So distribute. We get 4x plus 10. On the right side, we get 9x minus 24. So we see we have just a very nice linear equation and just go through the process of, process of solving that. So I say to move the 4x, excuse me, move the 4x to the other side. That way I can keep a positive coefficient for my variable term. And if I move my x over there, I should go ahead and move my constant term to the left side, like this. And so, make sure those guys cross out. I have 34 is equal to 5x. And finish solving this by dividing both sides of the equation by 5. So x is equal to 34 over 5. Okay? 
it's really not all that bad because we have a proportion and because we can set the cross products equal. Now, I want you to know this is not the only way to solve this. In fact, let me go ahead and show you a, another way of tackling this problem. So, some of the equations that we're going to come across in this section are not proportions. And so, there's another way that we have for solving these rational equations. Actually, we've got really two more ways. So, if you look at this equation and you identify the LCD, so the LCD, when you look at the 3 and the 2, the LCD is 6. Now we've got two ways of clearing out the fractions by using the LCD. One of those ways is to multiply each side of the equation by 6. And let's make this 6 over 1 so we understand that we're multiplying times 6. I have a lot of students in the past that have said 6 over 6, but that doesn't, that's not multiplying times 6. So the reason we do this is so that we can now reduce away those uh, denominators. 3 goes into 6 twice, and 2 goes into 6 three times. And so what we're left with is the equation 2 times 2x plus 5 is equal to 3 times 3x minus 8, which you see is the same thing that I have right here. Okay. So that is one way. You can use the LCD and clear out those fractions. Here's another way to use that common denominator. All right. And so this method that I'm going to show you is what we're going to use when we have a lot of fractions, more than just having the two that we have here. So we said the LCD is 6. So here's what we can do. We can rewrite each side of the equation in each fraction to have the same denominator. So if I know that my LCD is 6, right? what factor is missing to turn 3 into 6? Well, this guy is missing a factor of 2. So I need to multiply both the denominator and the numerator times 2. Now multiplying times 2 over 2 is multiplying the fraction times 1, so it doesn't really change uh, its meaning. Over here, what would turn 2 into 6 is a factor of 3. So if I multiply the denominator by 3, I also multiply the numerator by 3 to create an equivalent fraction. Now, the big idea about all of this is this following statement. And it says this, it says, if you have two fractions that are equal, and they have the same denominator, so as long as those denominators are the same, then what you can do is that you can equate the numerators and turn that into your equation. So 3 times 2 and 2 times 3 both equal 6, which means I can ignore those guys and rewrite this and form my equation from what I have in my numerators. And again, you see that this is the same type of setup that I've had uh, the previous two times. And so when I solve this or this, it's the same way as I solved it up here. And I'm still going to get 34 over 5. So let's see, um, let's see some more, uh, more examples.